Hello, my name is Leo and welcome to BrickScore, where we make fun LEGO builds and experiments. Today, we are in search of the best LEGO shooter to play with. So I thought I could make the experiment more interesting by turning it into a competition to find the number one LEGO shooter. The results of the competition will shock you. Okay, probably not, but it's still pretty interesting and you should keep watching. I had the idea for this video when I was building this Boba Fett microfighter and got to the flick shooters and thought to myself, wow, this is lame. And I started wondering, what is the best LEGO shooter? And how do you even define the word best? So I came up with three criteria to find the perfect projectile. There will be three competitions, speed, strength, and accuracy. First is the speed competition. We made this chart with squares in a specific size. So we will measure how fast these projectiles go by taking slow motion footage and then counting how many squares it goes past within one second. And that will tell us how fast each one is going. Now, I am not an engineer, so these figures may not be entirely correct. For our purposes, we can use this test to determine how much faster or slower a projectile is against another projectile in the same testing environment. But before we proceed with the speed test, let us first meet the challengers. Which shooter is the fastest, strongest, and most accurate of them all? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever LEGO Olympics where we will find out who is the number one LEGO shooter. Now join me in welcoming our contestants. Up first is Mr. Grumpy, the classic stud shooter. Will he take first place or will the tile monster steal the show? Or will the blue beast dominate today's competition? Not if yellow guy has anything to say about it. Everyone should watch their backs because motorized mayhem is on the scene. The last and definitely the least, the fail that inspired this whole competition, Flicky. First up to the plate is Mr. Grumpy and I already found a flaw with my testing methodology. I'm gonna need a bigger backdrop to measure the speed of the shooters. I didn't expect them to be going this fast, but this is a welcome surprise. Okay, so I added two more A4 sheets, so hopefully we can measure it this time. With that out of the way, let's take a look at how fast the stud has been shot. Wow, so that little stud was going 46 kilometers per hour. And that is why I wear eye protection. Safety is number one priority. Up next is the Blue Beast. The speed to beat is 46 km per hour. Is he up to the task? Oof, an average of only 22 km per hour. That is quite a bit slower. And you know what's interesting is how quickly you see it drop. The stud and this water piece both experience the same force, which is the acceleration due to gravity at 9.8 meters per second. But this one seems to drop faster. Why is that? Is gravity broken? Well, not quite. Basically, we were able to observe it drop in a dramatic fashion because we captured it on camera. If I had a larger testing space, we would see that if I shot this water piece that weighs 3.2 grams, and this stud which barely registers on the weighing scale from the same height, they would both hit the ground at the same time. Assuming that there is no difference in air resistance, they would both accelerate to the ground at the same rate. I was unable to test this right now, but that might be fun to revisit in the future. Next is Yellow Guy. Let's see how he does. Wow, 40 km per hour. Not quite as fast as the stud, but a lot faster than his big brother. This puts him firmly in second place. The tile monster's round 2x2 tiles looks a lot like a frisbee. Do you think the air resistance inherent in this design will help it fly faster? A respectable 30 kilometers per hour. Now it's motorized mayhem's turn, but before we see the results, let's take a closer look at this powered stud shooter. This is an XL motor, and I attached this six stud shooter with an axle and locked it in with this piece. When the motor turns, it moves this axle, which sends all six studs flying forward. How fast do they go? Let's see and looks like it's tied with the 2x2 tile shooter at 30 km per hour. And here are the results. Um, I haven't had my turn. What? What do you mean you still haven't had your turn? Ah, fine. Really? 4 km per hour? 
A poor showing, but the crowd seems to really like Flicky. I guess people love an underdog. And as I said before I was interrupted, here is the results table. The fastest shooter on the board is none other than the single stud shooter. No surprise that the smallest projectile piece records the highest speed. With the speed test in the rear view mirror, let's take a look at the course for the strength test. This is the chart that we are using. It has a starting point and a ruler with markings every 10 millimeters. And meet the weight block that we will be shooting today. The way we will be testing strength is by shooting a weight and measuring how much it is displaced by the projectile. First up to bat is Mr. Grumpy, and he doesn't look like he is up for it. And indeed, he barely makes the weight move. Let's see what the crowd thinks. And it's a similar story for Tile Monster and Motorized Mayhem. The lack of mass in their projectiles are really hurting their performance. They all lack that brute force. A 2x2 tile weighs only 0.33 grams and a single 1x1 stud is only 0.12 grams. Those numbers are from Bricklink. My weighing scale is not sensitive enough to measure those low numbers. Even if they are shot out at surprising speeds, they are no match against our strength test today. Our next contestant seems to stand a better chance at this test. Let's take a look. Certainly not lacking in the oomph department, the blue monster managed to displace the weight by an average of 133.33 millimeters on our scale. Next is another spring-based shooter, the yellow guy. Let's see how he does. Better than zero, but not by a lot. It seems a single small spring shooter is not very strong, but how about two? And this is an unexpected outcome. We doubled the number of spring shooters, but instead of getting twice the amount of displacement as we expected, we got more than 10 times the movement. I'll admit I don't have an explanation for this, so if you do know why this did not scale as expected, please leave a comment down below. And here are the results. Oh, I almost forgot again. There is one more contestant. Let's see if he can blow these results out of the water. Hello again. I'm very strong. No, you're not. And that's a wrap on the strength competition. Here are the final results. Taking the top spot is... The Blue Beast with his water projectile. The projectile that weighs only 3.2 grams managed to push the weighted block as far as 150 millimeters from the starting point. In our tests today, we used primarily two types of shooters. Spring-powered shooters and manual shooters. Spring-powered, as the name suggests, uses a compressed spring to fire out a projectile. There are two kinds that I could find of LEGO spring shooters. This smaller one and this larger one. Basically, you insert the matching projectile piece here to compress the spring and engage the lock inside. Once it's loaded, you have to be very careful not to accidentally set it off or you might hurt yourself. To trigger this larger one, you just have to press this button. And for the smaller one, you have to kind of tap from here to free it from the lock and it will launch itself. In manual shooters, this includes the classic stud shooter, this disc shooter, as well as this flick shooter. For this stud shooter, you have to put the studs inside here and this handle pops up. You have to press this down to send the stud flying. It rarely shoots straight and I will discuss this more during the accuracy test. For the disc shooter, you put the 2x2 tile here, and you kind of have to push it out from behind. This thin part is a little bit flexible, and it acts sort of like a spring in the sense that it flexes a little bit. Then as soon as the disc is out, they move back into place, and that inward motion propels the disc forward. As for the flick shooter, you just sort of flick it. It is a friction fit with the holes here, so it's held there just fine. It's just not too impressive. With the accuracy test, I planned on using this 3D printed target shooting thing, but I had issues with the testing parameters as I am unable to eliminate the human factor. But while working with the different shooters, I have made observations on different factors that affect their accuracy. I have done my best to score these accordingly. The spring shooters are tied for first place. They are quite accurate and consistent owing to the ease of their triggering mechanisms. The larger shooter seems slightly better. 
It takes some getting used to, but I think the disc shooter is the next most accurate. It also has the benefit of air resistance owing to the shape of the projectile. Next is the single stud shooter. It tends to shoot upwards depending on how you press the mechanism. It's fairly inconsistent. For a similar reason, the six shooter is also inconsistent and borderline chaotic owing to the machine gun-like mechanism. If you want to lose your studs, load them up here and let it rip. And dead last when it comes to accuracy is the flick shooter. No surprises here. If you can barely get the projectile flying consistently, then accuracy is the least of your worries. No, I'm accurate. No, no you're not. Well, if you want the fastest projectile, you should pick up the stud shooter. And if you want the strongest projectile and you actually want to hit your target, then you pick up the large spring shooter. If you want a projectile that could go the farthest, then it's a toss-up between the stud shooter and the disc shooter. Did you like this video? If you have been subscribed to this channel for a while, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you like this new direction for the channel. I am trying to find my place on YouTube and all I can do is hope to take steps in the right direction. I would appreciate your feedback in the comments below. And if you are new to this channel, then welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe. There are many more interesting LEGO builds and experiments coming on this channel. If you have suggestions on what I should test or build next, then please leave them in the comments section below.